the program, the Forum on Canal de English. My guest today is uh, Prophet T. Arasam Ebuta. He is a man of God, and the way he is presiding is the gl glorious chapel. Christ Miracle. Anyway, Christ Miracle Chapel. And we're going to talk about the Word of God today. We are in the month of December that Christi Christendom refers to it as the Holy Month. And what have Christians got to do during this month? And that's the reason why we are inviting him today. And we are also inviting him for one other thing he did. It seems he was one of the few Cameroonians who believed that the indomitable lionesses were not to lift the crown. What other predictions can he make? And what is his take on false pastors that are populating the evangelical church today around the world? This and many more will be our encounter or will be what we are going to be talking about in a short while. As I announced at the beginning or at the introduction of this program that we are receiving as guests for the program, the forum this morning, uh, Prophet Assam Ibuta. Prophet Assam Ibuta, it's a pleasure having you here today. Yeah, good morning. How are you doing? Well, fine. Uh, I'd like to say God bless every viewer of this program, wherever you may be watching us this moment. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good. Now, I will begin by what I said last that you predicted that the indomitable lionesses were to lose their march against the falcons of Nigeria. Um, what other thing can you say? But where did you have that power to predict uh, on the end, uh, the, the faith of the lionesses? Yes, um, I was born a prophet. You were born a prophet? Yes, I was born a prophet. I began prophesying from the age of five. And uh, though um, many things, everything I said by the grace of God came to pass. And uh, God, uh, the prophet, the word the prophet, according to uh, Samuel, a prophet is a seer. I was born a seer. So how God opened my eyes that day when I was being questioned and interviewed over a canal day, I, I, I feel sometimes I feel not to expose some things that I see because of the nature of our country. There are some truths that when you see them and you say them, gets you into problem. So that's why when I was questioned that day, you see, if you can watch the video, you see, it took me a little time to tell what God showed me. But I told the, 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 the journalist, I told him, uh, what God is showing me, God was showing me that Cameroon was not going to win the match. God showed you that Cameron was not going to win the match. Yeah. And you said you were a prophet when you were five years old. How I was born a prophet and I began manifesting the gift of prophecy from the age where, of five. Where, where were you born? Well, I was born in Tiko. When? I was born the year 1980. 1980? Yes. So by 1985, you began prophesying? I began prophesying. And what did you prophes prophesy when you were at age five? Well, I, I, I can quite remember my mom kept this, the story that I, I gave a, a prediction about my uncle who was to travel to Nigeria for a business. And I told him not to travel because I saw an accident in the water and he went and had an accident. So this is one of the major prophecies I gave in those days. So that was in 1985? 1985. 1985. And in Tiko? Yes, in Tiko. Where were you living in Tiko? I lived at Street 7. Street 7? Yes, Tiko. In 37 in Tico, 1980. Do you know somebody around 37 called John Noah? Oh, no. In those days, we were very little. I can know very well. Um, one papa, they called him Papa Ma had no good. Mm -hmm. In okay. those days. In those days. Yes. In the 80s. Now, where does your power of prediction comes from? Well, my inspiration comes from God. From God? Yeah. The Almighty God. Almighty God. Now, before that, what else can you predict? You predicted that the indomitable lioness were to lose against Nigeria, the lost. Yeah. And you predicted that your uncle was to have an accident. Yeah. When you were five years old, yes. he had an accident. Yeah. And did he survive? Well, it, it had, we, we had a, a great loss in the family. A great loss in the family that till date we, we, we didn't see his corpse. Mm -hmm. Ah, so he, all right, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Now, where does your power of prediction come from? Like I said, it came from the God Almighty. Mm -hmm. 
And um, like I also said that God created people with their diverse offices. Everybody was born to be somebody. You know, like he said in the, in the scripture in Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I made you a prophet unto nations. Before I was born, I was, I was made a prophet by the Almighty God. Mm. So that is my office. That is your office, to yeah. become a prophet. Yeah. To be a prophet. Yeah. You are a man of God and you have done a lot of predictions, right? Yes. Now, you are observing all the political, you're observing the political turmoil taking place in Cameroon right yes, now, I right? Yes. Yeah. What can you predict? But before that, did you see what is, was going to happen in Boya and Bamenda? Yes, um, three weeks ago, it was in a plain service in the church. And I gave this prophecy that God opened my eyes and showed me something happening precisely the 22nd. And I said it in a plain service in church with witnesses in church that we should pray for our country because I see, I see tears everywhere, people crying on the street from the 22nd. So we prayed for that. Was it just a vague about Cameroon or were you precise about the localities? Yes, uh, God showed me, the first place was Bamenda that God showed me. Then I saw people on the street crying and I saw dead bodies on the street. So I, I asked God that God should not allow it to happen in my country. So I prayed and I, I also told the people in church to pray. So we prayed and prayed and prayed seriously for that. But God did not listen to you because somebody died in Bamenda. I, I, I think that if not for that prayer, it would have been worse than what happened. Good. Now, what do you foresee about the future of Cameroon? Well, you have uh, to say everything here. Don't hide anything. You said somewhere that there are things you don't want to say, but I can assure you here you are free to say everything because I'm also going to ask you a number of questions about the people of God. Well, um, the future of this country, um, 2017, there's going to be something that would be great in the country. What thing? For instance, I see Cameroonians getting into jobs. The future of this country, Cameroonians are going to, some people frustrated on the streets are going to have jobs. Because I see some companies coming into the nation. But are you not tricking people? Everybody knows that Cameroon has something called Cameroon Business Investment Promotion. And the objective is to go out and market Cameroon. Okay. And then when you market a country, people have to come, investors have to come. That what, is not what precisely do you that, want me to say? No, I want you to tell me something precise. Don't tell me about jobs, jobs, okay. no. That one, everybody knows that companies come to Cameroon. Okay. I want you to say something that people who are watching us okay. Let will me. be surprised, as you said, about the indomitable lionesses versus the Falcons. Okay. If you say jobs, not everybody knows that it's been to Okay, be like last night, God gave me a vision about the country. And what was it all about? And, uh, um, you know, before I get into this, prophets carry two things. They see the negative side and they see the positive side. Begin with the positive. Okay. The positive side is that there's going to be an, an exchange between now to three years in the country. So, an exchange or a change? An exchange, let me say in quote, let me keep it like that. No, speak openly. Don't quote anything. The thing is that you are a man of God. You are preaching because you are going to tell us what Christians have to do in December, right? Yeah. Well, why come here and quote things? People want to get you clear. Okay. I said there's going to be an exchange. There's going to be a change. Good. A change. A change. Yes, Cameroon is going to have a change. What type of change are you talking about? Um... There's going to be a political change. Are you, in other words, trying to say Paul Bia is going to leave power? Um, I can't be telling you that for now because God hasn't told me to say that for now. Mm -hmm. God hasn't told me to say that for that now. That is a positive. There's a positivity. That's a positive aspect that is going to be changed in Cameroon. There's going to be a change in Cameroon. Yes. But, but you don't want to tell us specifically what type of change is going to happen. Yes. There's going to be a, a massive change in Cameroon. And uh, also, there's going to be, negatively, there's something I saw last Good. night. Negatively, what is it all about? Yes, last night, God showed me there's going to be an explosion. Explosion? Yes. Of what? Because in that vision, I saw something like, like fire, and I saw like a pole, 
a pole and what amazed me was somebody, some people stood around like the, this uh, uh, Sape Pompier. Uh, firefighters. Yes, there, was, there were some people like firefighters. Yes. So, but this, this kind of wild fire was pursuing I and my wife, you know. So we were like running. Then I asked God to, I asked God to intervene on what I saw. So uh, precisely, I want to say that um, they should go to a new, is it a new? A new. They yeah. should be very, very careful because I saw something very terrible, a massive explosion. So now are you trying to tell the management of ENU that they should be very careful with their hydroelectric dams, if they have thermal stations like that we have in Victoria Limbe or wherever, in Idibamba, whatever, they should be careful about that. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Are you trying to say here, clearly speaking, that your negative vision is that ENEO is going to have a massive explosion of its instruments or its hydroelectric dams, thermal stations, or you name it. Is that what you are trying to say? Yes, that's what I saw. I saw a, a fire explosion. You saw a fire explosion? Yes, I saw a fire explosion and I saw a crowd of people running out of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I prayed that, I prayed this morning I'm with my wife. We pray to cancel it not to come to pass. You pray to cancel that it should not come to pass. That is no e explosion. Well, politically, you've not been very clear. You said it's going to be change. What type of change are you talking about? Um, why politically I've not been too clear? Yes. Is that, um, you know, the mass, the masses, they might not understand what I am seeing. You understand me? You are a man of God and yes. a prophet, and a prophet has that gift of interpretation. Okay, let me get Could to you. Could you please it. interpret in clear terms what is going to happen politically? That, okay, clearly. politically, the leadership of this country is going to maintain. And what is the change all about? If the, the change in the yes. country yes. will be that the leadership of the country be, will be arrested by God in a massive way that he himself, himself will understand the system to apply where the people will have peace. I don't understand what you're saying. You said there will be change, and later on you said the same system is going to stay in place, so there's no change. No, when I say the change, I mean that the cry... The people have too much, too many crying in the streets. People are crying. Yes. Because of injustice. Yes. People want political change. Yes. And there you are some said there's going to be change. There are some people that will leave the city. There are some people who are going to leave. Are you talking about ministers? Are you talking about Paul Bia himself? Or whom are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about some people on the ground, on under, not the people, not the person at the top. No. Uh, uh, Prophet uh, Roland, you are not very clear. You are very ambiguous. It's not that you know our country. Oh, you know uh, our country. Yes, our country. How, what has happened with our country? It's in court. Okay, let, leave that aspect. Now let me ask you something. Now you are a man of God. Yes. At this point in time, your church is called the Miracle Christ Miracle Church International, right? Yes. Now, what can you give an as an advice to Christians during this holy month of December? Well, um, the, there's a, there's a, the, the advice I want to give to Christians is that this month is not a month for evil things to, to take place. Like, for instance, during uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas, people go on and ladies, uh, young ladies, young men go out doing fornication or evil things around. Now, this month is a month to be very holy, to be celebrated, as to be worshipped. We should worship our God. We should take it more holy, not for them to go around and do evil things like they do before. Okay, that's the advice you're giving them. Yes. I know your church has a TV station called the Arm. The of, Arm of God Television. And uh, why did you decide to go into televangelization? Well, when God called me, I was born. But when God called me into ministry, He gave me a vision, and in that vision, there was this is my arm. He He placed um, uh, an apple in the palm. So this is the arm, my arm, and in that apple there was fire burning. So he spoke to me, he said, this arm will reach out to nations through television, through radio stations. So that's why the name of the TV station is Arm of God TV. And God sent me to do that, using that medium to reach out to the poor, to those who can't get to me, those who don't know me, and who, what, what God is using me to do. And what is God, God is using, using you to do? And uh, where is your church located? Yeah, the church is located, for now, we are at Myondoba. Uh, let me just say, they call it Okadaba for now at 
after Bekuku, mm -hmm. they were taking the road towards southwest. We were at Myondoba and um, about a hundred meters behind Okada Bar. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's where the church is. That's situated. where the church is situated. Mm -hmm. You are a man of God, isn't it? I am by His grace. And now, as a man of God, what do you have on those people who are like you, who are not honest? Yes, uh, Jesus Christ himself said that the wrong ones and the good ones will mix together, but allow him himself to, to judge. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the people who are not honest, really they are leading people to hell. Yeah. They are leading the flocks to hell. Like now, they have made many people in my country, Cameroon, not to believe in miracles anymore. And do you know some of the pastors who are false pastors? Well, I may know them. It's not my place to point them. To point them. Yes. And you, are you honest? Yes, I'm honest. You're honest? Yes. Good. And can you tell us, can you explain why? Because I made a lot, I like you. I have a lot of respect for you. Yeah. Especially because you predicted that the Lions were going to lose. Yeah. Uh, but now, I've asked you this question right now. So you are an honest pastor, different from others. Yeah. And now what explains that? your church changes every six months from one locality to the other. Can you tell us about that? Well, the reason why my church changed from this place to another is the growth, the massive growth. Like even the reason why we left Bonap um, Ancien Road to Myondoba. Ancien Road were, you, were located in somebody's house. We're using a, a, the, uh, somebody's residence. Yes. And the church grew so massively. And now how many followers do you have currently? We are, we are seven months now in Douala, and we have in close to 400. That's very good. So God is really following you. By his grace. That's good. Praise God. Amen. And now the other thing is, you just told me, that I want you to be honest. Yeah. You just told me that you, ex you left from Myondoba. No, from Ancien Road. To Myondoba. Myondoba yes. That's good. Can you explain to me why you left Bamenda to Douala? Well, I didn't leave Bamenda to Douala. I left Bamenda to Ghana. I have a, we have a branch in Ghana, in Accra. So when I went to Accra, I wanted to like stay there for a while, and God said I should come back to Douala. Mm -hmm. So that's God sending me to Douala. God sending you to Douala? Yes, from Accra to Ghana, to Douala. Okay, okay, a crowd to Ghana. And, in, and, and another thing I would like to, you to clarify, right? Yeah. But why there are some on your Facebook page, you have glorious ministry. In your Facebook, on your Facebook page, I went there, I looked at it. Yeah. But now you say you are Christ Miracle International. Why do you have two names? No, it's not glorious ministry. What is it all about? It's glorious TV. Glorious TV. Yes. Yeah. We, we, we wanted to engage the TV station. So there was the first time my, my, my church wanted to be Glorious TV. So I, they started by Glorious TV. I said, no, I need to pray. That's where they stopped it. Good. I need to pray. That's why I get back now to the right The miracle. right miracle. Yeah. And the other thing is, can you explain to us why on your Facebook you have your name is Roland Ibe, but now you said your name is T.R. Asam Ebuta. Why are, you, why are you changing names? No, my name is not Roland Ibe. It's but I saw your photograph on it. On your, no, it's uh, me, okay. It's um, it's an error that a pastor made by inviting me. Mm -hmm. He invited me for a program, and he did. He made an error in writing Roland Ebuta to Roland Ibe. Mm -hmm. That was okay. an error. Yes. Okay. What is on your your say precisely? Because I would like you when you are a man of God and you have to speak the truth. Yeah. Tell us something about fornication and adultery in the church. Is it a good thing for pastors to be fornicating or committing adultery? No, it's not a good thing. Okay. And you as an individual who is speaking to me right now, yeah. are you blemish or unblemish as far as fornication and adultery is concerned? No, I have a wife. You have a wife? Yes. Now tell us this story. Do you know a certain girl called Chi Brenda? Chi Brenda? Yeah. I don't know Chi Brenda. You don't know Chi Brenda? Uh, Chi Brenda was... Uh, Yes, I come across Chief Brenda as a member of my church in Bamenda. In Bamenda? Yeah. And leaving Bamenda to Ghana, is it simply because you wanted to expand or you were running from the scandals that you created in Bamenda? No, I went to, Bam to Ghana to expand. To but, I went with my wife to Ghana. You went with your wife? Yes. And then Chief Brenda, what happened to her? Chief Brenda. 
Chief Brenda, mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a pastor in Bermuda Branch Church. I think it should be. You should be uh, concerned about no, but that. But a while ago, you told me that Chief Brenda, if a lady you knew in the church, and now you are trying to say, no, I be, said I know in the branch of my church in Bermuda. Good. Now, so my pastor in Bermuda can control that answer. That, your that pastor answer. can control that. Another question I wish to ask you because I want you to speak the truth. Yeah. And here we do the program that way. Yeah. You decry pastors who commit adultery, right? I you, don't you, 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 you are against pastors who commit adultery because they tarnish the image of the church, right? Of the, of the evangelization, isn't it? Yes. Good. But you, what do you say about this? It is alleged that you impregnated a lady, a woman, and her daughter in a quarter in Bonaberry called Ngele behind Das in Bonaberry. Is it true or false? Seriously false because my wife is in my house now. And we have three kids. You have three kids. Yes. So are you going to we say, have two kids can you swear on the Bible that you had nothing to do with the impregnating a woman and his wife and no. his daughter? God forbid. Is that a blackmail against you? That is a blackmail. Are you sure? What are you saying? That is a blackmail. Now, do you know a certain guy called, because when I invited you here, yeah. I interviewed one guy called T-Boy Terrence. T-Boy Terrence? Yes. <laughs> I Tibor Terence once um, once was um, um, he came to for he came from uh, from Dubai. He came from Dubai. Yes. And what happened between you and T Boy Terence? Okay, T Boy Terence was um, working. He, he said he was a, a little. He was a, he was um, a TV. He can edit the t television. So I was looking for somebody to arrange my TV. So, and I now saw T Boy. I don't know something happened, and I saw T Boy. So then he was brought by somebody to me. One, one other. So, All one. right, I'll leave it there. But I want to bring back this girl called Brenda. Are you, are you a man of God? But why are you refusing? Did, didn't you pay money to this lady called Chi Brenda? Because on Facebook, I inter because when I saw your face, it was very good. So I wanted to see. Didn't you make her pregnant? No. Didn't she come and cause problem in your church in Bamenda? No. I, I don't. Problem in my church in Bamenda, no. No. Are you saying the truth? Brenda did nothing in my church in Bermuda. But you know Brenda then? I know Brenda then Good. before going to Ghana. You know Brenda then, but you yeah. said a while ago that she was just a member. Okay, now, tell, member us, my now tell us now the situation where you knew Brenda. Yeah. You uh, have to be honest. Like I said, Brenda is a member yes. of my church in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. She was a member in my church in Bermuda. Did you pay 100,000 francs to Brenda because she was pregnant? God forbid. God forbid, sir. God forbid. My wife can bear weakness of that and my pastors. God forbid. God forbid. Yes. So you're really speaking the truth? Yes. But now the other question I would like to ask you is, why is it that you, are, you said, how many members do you have in Bamenda's followers in Bamenda? How many? My pastor in Bamenda. I have a pastor who controls How Bamenda many church. followers do you have in Bamenda? Well... We, we were about 100 and something. 100 and something, it's not precise. Yes. And now you are in what place in Douala? I'm in Miondoba. Miondoba. But do you know that the practices that you are being accused of, because you have when did Glorious Chapel Ministry International become not, Christ's sir, it's church? Not, it's not my church. Glorious Chapel Ministry is not my church. But why do you have it on your Facebook page then? The person invited me yes. to preach in his church in Douala. You can see it's a crusade. It's a crusade. Yes, he mm -hmm. invited me to preach. The, 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 the pastor is the pastor is a, a prophet. Prophet. Um, this prophet. Prophet Rene in, in, in Godamberry. That's Prophet Glorious Chapel. Rene Niba. Yes. Rene Niba. So you see that I've done a lot of in, uh, research on you. Yeah. So I want to ask you, if you are a man of God, tell us now, everybody's watching you. Yes. That you swear, but Christians don't swear, do they? Yeah, if you, if, you, if you are just, you can swear. Now, that the story about you impregnating a woman and, his, and her daughter in Bonaberry at that is wrong. It's wrong before God Almighty. It's seriously wrong. It's wrong. Yes. And that uh, Terence T says that you took his money away. You, he did a job for you. You never paid. It, it, do you, don't you think that you criticize other pastors? What you are doing also denigrates pastors 
the people who profess, who pretend to be a people of God. No, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Excuse me. You know that even Prophet T.B. Joshua, there were so many things said, allegations against him. Even in his church service, somebody dashed into the church. I mean, three ladies dashed into his church with children claiming to be that TB, Prophet T.B. Joshua is responsible for that, which is innocent. Now, there, uh, there was even a lady who was a worker in his TV, TV channel, Emmanuel TV, who testified a, a fake testimony, even giving people some proofs which was not true. Are you sure what you're saying? Yes, it's on Facebook. So are you think, do you think now that if I bring she Brenda, this woman and her daughter that you impregnated, it will be wrong? It will be wrong. Good. Okay. Now, what will you now say as a message to Christians on other pastors? Do they have to lead double lives or do they have to lead honest, just lives as Christians? Well, like I said, I said that pastors have to live a life that shows the light. And also, persecution comes, does not discourage anybody. Are you, do, so you, do you think you have been persecuted? Yes, I think so, sir. Who is persecuting you then? I just talked about, um, you just talked about Terence. Terence, so yes. Terence is persecuting you. Yes, he, he told me all openly. How did it happen, sir? How about Brenda? Is she pre persecuting you as well? Sir, I don't, I don't know anything about, uh, like, Brenda. Is she pregnant of you or not? No, sir. And you? Seriously, no, sir. No. And those two, the, 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 the lady and the, the daughter, I don't even know them, sir. Have you, has your church never been located at Nguele quarters in Bonaberry? My, my church has been located at Nguele. At, behind us? Yes, sir. But it's not behind us, it's... Um, it's at Ngwele. At Ngwele. We, I was using the, our, our native uh, traditional hall. You were using your native traditional hall? Yes, sir. And your native traditional hall is where you decided to, so you have become like a bite. You invite women and then you impregnate them. How many children do you have at the other? Sir, I don't invite women and impregnate them, sir. So you are not an honest pastor, are you? I am an honest pastor, sir. But an honest pastor cannot be committing adultery. Sir, you, you don't conclude what they told you when it's not a proof. Okay. All right. Somebody can, somebody can come even with a pregnancy, which is not your own. He can, because he has this pain to, pain to down or one or two reasons, the person can team up to, against somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very good. Okay. Uh, now, finally, to conclude this, our program today, uh, do I call you Reverend Roland Ibe or Reverend Assam Ibuta. I don't my, know your my identity. My name is Roland Ibuta, sir. Roland Ibuta. Yes, sir. My name is not Ibe. The Ibe there was an error from that um, pastor who invited me to preach. Okay. It was a great pleasure having you. Thank you, sir. And I hope that what you have told us today is true. Is the truth. And that you are not lying and I'm blackmailing. I'm not lying and nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. But never mind. I'm going to bring Brenda here next uh, tomorrow. Brenda is going to be here. Okay. And the two ladies who are accusing you to having, for having impregnated the mother and the daughter. Though the family will be here to tell us, and we are going to see, and we will be coming here to see who is going come, to speak sir. the truth. Okay, it was a great pleasure having you, and we are invited. And on that note that we are putting an end to this program this morning, and we hope that you are going to stay glued to programs on Canal de English. Once again, our guest was Prophet Assam Ibuta of Miracle Church International. Thank um.